te po ara no a te po ara no a te po te po kere kere ke a tu i te uri uri ko te po te kore ki te hu te anga taru taru ke te fatu manoa ke a re re te ha o tu pai hu te a te puru puru ke te anga kau ke a re re te ha o tu pai Pūrea aropo, pūrea awaho, pūrea te ia o te māra. Tōna he tātou e kati nei i te māra matanga, tōia ki te taha. Kia tū māra ma mai ai te whate toka o te kuaha e kuhu ai te māra matanga. Ko te ate pō, ko te ate pō, fiti ake ai te māra matanga. Whanu, whanu, harama i te toki, haumie, huie, taikie. Police emergency, where's your emergency? Who in Chivali? Who am I speaking to now? Rob. What's happening there? Uh, I think... I think they're someone's got to go. Three news. Good evening. Police have shot and wounded a man after a standoff in Auckland this afternoon. Police say they only fired at actor Robert Mokoraka after he came at officers with a meat cleaver in his hand. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Police were called by a resident who said the man was acting strangely. Superintendent George Fraser says police feared for their safety and fired one shot, which struck the man in the chest. So I was coming out of that driveway over there. The, there was one police car here, and there was a cop behind a tree. Maybe it was just there. This is my memory of it. Could have been behind that tree. But he was one behind one of these trees. And so one cop there had a Glock 9mm behind the tree. One cop here, Glock 9mm behind a police car. And crazy Rob spinning out of control. It's coming out of the driveway with a soup ladle wrapped in a tea towel and a meat cleaver dressed in some World War II regalia from a show that I co-wrote and co-acted in. Hmm. I suppose, uh, well, I'm, I'm just, just putting myself back there. I was just confused and scared. I wrote a suicide note. Oh, you're going to be better off. You know, including my daughter. You know, Dad, you know, you'll be better, with, better off. Everyone's going to be better off. You feel like you're actually doing people a favour. That's how strong the sickness of suicide is. Almost killed me. Almost killed me. <sighs> Seems like a lifetime ago. <sighs> Sorry, Tanifa, you didn't get your wish. Still alive. <sighs> In the sense, being shot, surviving it. It's a blessing. It's a blessing, and now I can use my knowledge and my compassion to help anyone in trauma understand and not have to go there. And here we are at Toll Stadium Whangarei, Aotearoa, New Zealand, and it is absolutely jammed packed to capacity. What a test match! And it is full time! 15 points each with a kick to come. And up to take that kick is long serving legendary All Black Rob Mokaraka. 
he lines up the goalposts, which are 95 metres away. That is one hell of a kick. That's almost the entire length of the footy field. He takes another step back and he thinks back to five months ago when he tried to take his own life. And he hopes that his coach, his teammates, the crowd and the nation can't see the shade guilt and failures, the foundations on which he's built his life upon. I was writing all of this in the hospital with my guts wide open, trying to figure out why I was in this state of trauma. It's just trying to articulate what was wrong inside of me. And um, it was all over the place because I was all over the place. And it was a slow build because I realised I wasn't quite ready to hold that space mentally. And over a period of years, uh, unfortunately due to a colleague in the entertainment industry, she took her life. And then within a week and a half, a friend of mine took his life. So standing around my friend's grave in Kaitaia with his ex-partner, with his three sons, and her looking at me going, Rob, got to do something about this. You know this world. Can you do something? And I still remember to this day how pathetic it must have sounded when I said, I'm writing a play. Now I start to think of my depression. <laughs> this is weird like a storm in a cowboy film. Ching! Ching! <whistles> ching, 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 ching! Meanwhile, in the saloon, ding, 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 Meanwhile, outside, the storm is getting bigger and stronger, and it picks up the old church and it throws it 100 miles away. Still holding on to each other underneath the church, the whole community are there. Is everybody all right? You okay? Remember, we can only get through this together. We are all bound by this entity, this thing called trauma. And so I'm just articulating this in such a way that people go, finally, I didn't know how to say it. That guy, he's saying it, what's happening inside of me, because I couldn't find the words. Nah! Let's go, shit it, let's get off this planet! <gasps> and I didn't know what that voice was. It would freak the shit out of me. We need to start talking, Fano. I wish I did. Crying is better than dying. Was for 
the moment a person feels heard and listened to, without judgment, is the moment they start to heal. And that's all Shop Bro's doing. I get the bat signal uh, in the sky via email or private messenger or phone calls. Either someone has taken their life, and um, and it may be the um, yeah, it may be the uh, fourth suicide in a month. And finally, someone finally is brave enough to to make the call, and they go and admit we don't have the tools. We've heard about the shop bro thing, and um, we heard that it's it's a, a safe, funny way to look at something heavy. And then I tell them I'm not funded or sponsored, so I'm politics free. I've also got to keep watching myself. I'm not on medication. And now I've got to talk to keep everything in balance. If I'm doing something wrong, things aren't going well, I have to speak up. Or this thing will kick me in the ass again. Growing up, uh, there was my dad, my mum, and uh, my sister Leanne. We lived wherever the army posted dad. So I grew up as an army brat, very transient lifestyle, my sister and I. Um, that's him again with his little sister, with Leanne. There, Leanne in the push chair. <laughs> Uh, there's some of the ones in Singapore. That was just before Singapore, down in Burnham. Uh, we came back down to Dunedin, and from Dunedin, on the move again after nearly three years, back up to Auckland. Humour and sports were my ends, because I was constantly changing schools, freaking out, scared all the time. I had this hurt little boy in me who didn't know what was wrong with him. So when you see Bullet Bully Hunter on stage, I suppose that's a little Rob with more tools and more knowledge, because I realised that her traumatised child got me to adulthood the best as he could. Ah, ko Bullet Bully Hunter tōku ingoa, he uri tēne no ngāpuhi, a ki te taha o tōku māma ko ngai tūhoi tōku iwi. Kia ora. Um, my name is Bullet Bully Hunter, and I come from a long line of bullets who fuck a papa back to the land walls or musket walls. As a little kid, he was an entertainer. It's sort of like being the making of him, really, from there. The making and breaking and remaking, you know what I mean? I ran away from Auckland to go to drama school. That was sometime after I tried to take my life three times in one day when I was 21. I was put in a psych unit, because they just didn't know what to do. Yeah, he went off the rails a little bit, um, had a bit of a turn, and, but yeah, well, I guess it was a, a, um, perhaps an early warning sign that something was going amiss in his life somewhere. You actually think your kids are having a pretty good life and they're okay, they're looking normal, things are riding along, they're happy, they're, they've got friends, they've got girlfriends, they're, getting along in life, he's got jobs, he's different jobs, and seems happy, seemed happy. From 21 years of age to I was 36, I suppressed that tanifa and that trauma, and I realised the more you don't deal with it, the more you just pretend you have a happy life, the more it will come back later on in life. Really hard to, um, to come to grips with the, what went wrong, you yeah? know?
When I awoke in my hospital room, I was like, <gasps> and I've got all these drips in me. My guts are cut wide open. I'm like, oh, no, I'm still alive. Oh, how shameful. Everyone's going to know that I'm a failure. How shameful that everyone knows that I'm a useless human being. Put shame on the family, shame on my friends. So I felt all of that, but the real first thing I actually did think was like, oh, I hope my dad doesn't know. That was the big thought that came up. I hope my dad doesn't know. Fuck, what if he knows? It rings a hard recall for me, because I, my injuries were very similar to what he had. So it brought back a, a, a dark side again from, from years gone by. Uh, from Vietnam, and um, to see it all happen was was double the episode for me. And my own dad, Bullet Bully Hunter, he was in the Vietnam War. Come on, cousins, out of the chopper, into the jungle, Kaltere, Kaltere. And the thing that we all have in common in our whānau is that we all suffer from the pre. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> We all have massive bouts of depression. <clears throat> Aroha, mate. Sometimes it's really hard to get out of bed because it feels like there's a weight on you. E rongo e rongo, o mai nga tipu e whakaki te tinana, e oranga mō te tangata. Au eke, au eke, hei. The last time I saw you, Lee, mm -hmm. was in my hospital room. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yep. 2009. Maybe it was 10 years. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty um, confronting, actually. Mm -hmm. In what way? Oh, well, you know. I mean, I know your brother's shot, lying a bit, all screwed up with, um, in the hospital bed. I think your brother's shot by, you know, police was probably the hardest mm. to get over. Like, yep. it, I was like, he's not a criminal. Mm. He didn't rob a bank. Mm. You know, that's those were initial thoughts when I had the phone call, was Yeah, it yeah, yeah, making me feel emotional because I haven't had this conversation with you. Yeah, yeah. For me, it was uh, what was going on, you know? Like, I couldn't actually ask you because you were so... You, you needed to it. heal. Your body needed to heal, like... The spiritual side obviously was misaligned hugely mm. for you to get to that position in the first place. Yeah. And yeah, just the whole how do you get so misaligned? But basically, unresolved trauma. It was. Unresolved trauma. And that's why, you know, making sure that it doesn't happen to anyone else. Mm. Is it something from our childhood, like we grew up together, right? I was doing a year into shop right game, man. This is awesome. And I started to see a door up here at the corner of my eye. And I'm like, look at the door, it's gone. Talking to you, see the door come up again. Like, Door's gone. I'm like, what the hell am I going crazy? Mm -hmm. Like I was literally thought I was having a mental breakdown. And this door was making me scared. And I was like, oh shit, I'm not feeling good. And some friends, I rang some friends, I got some good mates and they said, one of them said, perhaps you're remembering something. I rang certain friends, I said, this is coming up. And they said, I thought it might happen, Rob, because you are opening up the doors to the past. Of course yours is going to fly open. So I was just having more and more vague memories come up. And I started to feel fear of, yeah, being a little boy being molested. It makes sense that you've got to be brave enough. It takes a while, it took me a while, brave enough to look, go back to the past, because all the answers to the trauma were in the mirror. And I told the old man, I was probably a year and a bit ago, we're outside here, and I said, because I told a couple of the aunties what I've remembered. Yeah. And then I said, hey, Dad, so what happened? I had to go see a shrink again. Her memory's been molested. I'm not laughing. I'm laughing because it's full on. And he goes, you right now? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I'm good. And he's like, you know, Dad, made a few words. And I was like, yeah, I am right. It's sad to say, I'm shocked, but I'm not shocked. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm. you know, I've heard so many stories of people being touched. Yeah. You know, that has been unwarranted. 
I'm glad you're here, sis. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> mm, we can have this conversation. Mm. And many more. Yeah. To come. Oh, yeah. I'm not out to blame anyone. I'm not out to get anyone. I just want whoever was hurt to know that it's not their fault. And, uh, yeah, for me, you have to go back and acknowledge that trauma, to release it, to cry it out, release that shit into the air, because it's not ours to hold. My amazing cousin, Clint Edmonds, he is like a physicalized and spiritual version of our koro. We didn't move, we didn't move more karaka muhi taka te ua. And our pa was a physical presence, our koro, but he was a gentle giant. The beautiful thing that my cousin has imbued to me is the tikanga of knowing that we just have to walk in porno tika aroha. It feels way better. <laughs> Feeling a bit time yeah. hard, guess. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, that's better. Good to see you, cousin. Always good to see you, my cousin. I think about my kuru, I think about my nan. Their foot has always been one foot in the past, as in the, in the old way of that Māori thought and felt, and one foot in modern society. We've lost lots of language, lots of tikanga, a loss of connection to our ancestors, and that makes us fractured. And because of the physical landscape, there's a spiritual landscape that is uh, fractured. I keep thinking about things like what our whakapapa's competing with in the modern world. Mm -hmm. Things that block us up and take your um, oranga. Yeah, because it's just a confusion between yeah. te ao Māori and te ao Pākehā. Massive. And Māori are confused, we get confused. We only have to look at the forest to know what we're supposed to do. Day and night, there they are, standing strong, side by side, looking after these young ones growing up under them. I created the... Uh, the puppet, the orange and the tea towel, I'll call that a puppet. Based on queer, on, on old ladies, and my nan, my grandmother. And so the nanny is basically tapping me on the head, going, hey, snap out of this, think with your heart. Stuck in here, be stuck in here, in here. And even though you're getting a bit of a whack, there's still heaps of aroha and love. Like, come on, wake up. I love them, I'll forever miss them, my nan. My kuya passed uh, a couple of months ago, and it must have been weird for them to be of a generation watching their kids and their grandkids, their mokopuna, grow up and go, well, you guys are weird. Why don't you just look in here? All the answers are in there.
that's the main thing. I'm happy to be alive. Far out. Yeah. I found some uh, taonga, some treasure. Look at that. Can I, can I help you? Yes, you can. Can delicious. I'm going to have some of that. Very civilised. A little bit of pinot noir. A bit of kino and pinot noir. Oh, times have changed. Times have changed. I've changed. Go into the shower. Remember, we have to build this relationship before you hop in the shower with me. Oh, God. All right. Oh, undies, yeah. Yeah, all of that stuff. month before the shooting, they were in London performing a show that I co-wrote and co-acted in called Strange Resting Places. And it was like national success, it was an international touring show and we were getting so much love and so many accolades bestowed upon us. I was wondering what's wrong with me, I, I feel like I'm a piece of shit, I'm a liar. I'm a fake. I'm not even sure why you're in here. Why even on the planet? Why even three? Don't you know that the day you're on board, we hated you. Don't you know that everybody hates you? When we did come back to Aotearoa, to New Zealand, I was falling apart in my relationship. I was falling apart emotionally, financially. I was falling apart all over, and I did not know how to tell anyone. I was scared. So I thought, uh, okay. Uh, I know how to get out of this crazy, intense situation of a relationship. I'll go and sleep with somebody, seeing that it works. Quite the opposite, it turned into one massive, intense storm. that I was like, ah, oh, I'm the tiny fargos, that's right. <laughs> Jump, do something, end it, give it, do everyone a goddamn favor. <laughs> so I pick up the phone and I dial 111. Now the reason I dial 111 is because growing up, I used to see the police shoot Māori on the news, right or wrong, and I thought, hey, I'm a Māori, this should be easy. And I think I deserve a very violent death. So I picked that phone up. Hello, 111 Emergency Services. Hey, um, um, don't just stare at the phone, shit, and say something wrong, anything! Someone's broken into my house. Yes, whoa. Excuse me, sir, don't let her talk, shit it. You say something, anything, Rob. Um, I, um, anything. He's armed. And I start to describe myself from head to toe. I'm in here, I've left the front door open for the police to come through, because I was waiting for them to rush in here and shoot me up. And I'll see, uh, a female police officer, she was Samoan, and she's sneaking over that back fence. And she started creeping across the backyard, and then I just go with a meat cleaver. And I was like, hey lady, go around the go around the front door. Because the front door's open, but it's a meat cleaver. And uh, yeah. She looks up surprised that I um, could see her and took off over that fence. Then I end up going to this pantry. Grab a bottle of soy sauce. Pow. And I walk out. Not this one. That wasn't there. But I'm walking out this door. I open this. 
and I'm not sure who's out there, but I just throw the bottle of soy sauce onto the road. And I walked out this door. You know, the first person I thought of when I came out was a Māori male shot to death by police in Waitara in Taranaki. And I thought, I'm next. This is definitely me. I'm, it's my time, I'm gonna be gone. What's in the tea towel? What's in the tea towel, Rob? You know what's in the tea towel! Don't take another step, Rob! Everyone has a bad day sometimes, I'm telling you, they do, yeah? And I thought, well, what the hell is this South African cop doing in my movie? Who knows what tomorrow can bring, huh? I believe in you! Can you hear me? Ah! Rob! Whoa. Rob! Yeah, yeah, I'm talking to you, Roba. You can hear me, huh? The charges were two counts of um, possession of imitation firearm, two charges of threatening to kill police officers or grievous bodily harm, and each charge was like five years in jail. So I'm very lucky that I'm not in jail. I'm very blessed that I got access to legal aid and a real high quality, high caliber one, which a lot of our people do not have access to. So my first time I was invited was to Rimutaka prison, which is just out of Wellington. And I thought that was gonna be the only prison show I'd ever did. Then I get invited to another prison. And then another. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Invercargo Prison Comedy Club. Could you please welcome to the stage your very poor only host, Rob Mokaraka. Thank you for that. Thanks for inviting me to this prison. Because my whakaaro, my philosophy, is that the light can dissolve the dark. And I was about to go into the Rimutaka prison as I was coming into here. And I finally arrived at the, at the therapy unit for violent offenders. And uh, I remember one guy, big black Māori guy, he was just intensely staring at me, just intensely. When it came time to hand out the hearts, I just thought, be brave for for the aroha lights. And I also thought to take Brad me in too. <laughs> straight up. Straight up, my very, very slow wheel. And I got to the third scene, I... And he just went... Shouting <laughs> 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 myself. <laughs> and um, I didn't know what to do, I was just there. And the other 27 men go, what's he going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought, more aroha, more light for the brother. See how we go. Give him the second one here. Oh, not going good. Not going very good. And the third one here. No, 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 no. Could have got a smile on his face. Oh, there's a change. There's a change. I gave him a fourth one here. No, 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 no. But he's still smiling. And I left it at that. Leave the brother to it. And what my director and I suddenly realised after our time in New Tokyo was um. They weren't serving aroha on the menu, and the brother was hungry for aroha. <laughs> <laughs> what you shared there was awesome. You can't do that in jail, because that's at risk yeah, yeah. of top suicide. Yeah, yeah. So, how, so where, do you get to, where do you get in prison? Can you release those emotions? Yeah, that's a great question, brother. You can't. Yeah. I'm not proud, I'm 53 and still coming to jail, and I'm asking myself, hey, why? I'm doing the same stupid shit, mm. knowing the same outcomes, why? I question myself. 
I had a counsellor in Dunedin and she said, you've got skeletons in your closet that you don't want to deal with. She mm. was on the bunny. I was sexually abused. How do you deal with that? You don't deal with it in jail. <sighs> and as you said, it's tough to have those feelings in the air to express them. You can't. Mm. You're weak. Mm. It's real good for me to hear from you. Oh, yeah. Uh, because, you know, we've all got different pasts. Yeah, yeah. But the yeah. thing that relates us all is unresolved trauma. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The way I'm travelling can uh, just burn me out. When I'm tired, the tanifa of self-doubt and the tanifa from the past comes back. So I will try and find a Māori healer after I finish my shows. Because I need to replenish Holistically. Hey. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Hi, uh, Ben. Oh, been good. Yeah? Come on in. Okay. Yeah? Mm. So it's been a big week, hey? Massive, massive. Yeah. Five, five shows in. Holy shit. Uh, is that two wow. days? What day is it? Wow. <laughs> yeah, what's the body thing? The Tina was cramping up. Is he can show? <gasps> oh. I still feel strong in my weight or my narco. But I am tired. Yeah. And um, yeah, and I got news that my mate took his life yesterday. Well, I got news of it yesterday. Oh, okay. So another, another tiny fire snatched oh. down the lights back into the pool. So. Oh. So it's the good of that stuck in my knuckle at the moment. Aye. Mm. Ten or pody. Mm. Mm. I met Steffi at Toll Stadium in Whangarei. I don't know who she was. She spoke and she spoke about Bobby Charles. And then the next time we saw each other was this year. And she goes, Rob, I want to have a memorial for Bobby Charles. Oh, I've got to be there. Rob's here because people need to know the truth and he uncovers the truth of depression. It's time for us to actually come to the table and have an honest conversation so we can support our kids like Bob. I'd like to introduce you to Rob Mokaraka. So this man, I didn't know who he was, went to Whangarei, 10 minutes into his show, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and then I didn't stop crying. I saw the side of Bob that I had neglected. Oh. Oh. 
with the beginning part where he's all bubbly and stuff. See, I saw that in my son. There was 18 years of his life, he was that bubbly, happy-go-lucky kid. Yeah! And the truth has been really hard to deal with. The truth has been really, really hard to deal with. There was no one thing to blame. There were just layers of contributing factors. He went to at least six different daycares. He went to at least 20 different primary schools. And he went to at least eight different high schools. It wasn't until Bob died, actually, I realised how much of a contributing factor that could have been, because he never got the opportunity to grow with people. That's on me. That's on me. And I was suicidal at 13 years old. I tried to take my life. So I think a lot of the self-blame came from bar out that I give you that. Did you catch that from me? But I had to find forgiveness because I still had other kids. And I had to find forgiveness for Bob. But I had to learn from it too. and he is off. It is a 95 metre kick to come and this could win the test match. He is still running, he is running. He kicks it, it's going. Oh. <laughs> it's ongoing, Fyman. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to acknowledge that our waiter is still landing and we'll keep landing as we have the score all. I just can't believe the what I just seen. I saw uh, a lot of my son. Yeah. Anybody want to get up and have a few words for Connor or whatever? Hey, come and have a have a Connor because I'm not one for standing up in front of crowds and having a chat. Thank you for that. No, thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me. I'd just like to say thank you guys. I'll think about Rob every day, but um, kind of when Rob passed, um, I didn't really know what to do and I've kind of hidden from you guys. And um, I know that hasn't been the right way what to, to deal with it. Um, I wish I haven't, I, I wish I didn't do that. Um, when Rob left, my life kind of Went a bit downhill, but I get your messages. I'm sorry I have replied. But yeah, that's all. I love you guys. Thanks for everyone. I'd like to uh, acknowledge you, Isaac. You, you don't have to be sorry for anything. You're going through your journey. But you know, we're always, you know where we live. I enjoyed your presentation. It brought back a lot of memories for me. Um, I lost my daughter to suicide four years ago. Um, it's still got a lot on my mind. And, and especially for her children. Her kids were only seven, eight, nine when she did it. the first time I've ever spoken about it. For you, Stephanie, and you, Bob, the loss of a beautiful boy. So like you said, we all have to call it all. We all have to talk. And we all have to do it as a whanau. Kia ora. It took a lot of courage to say that, and I know that. Thank you. Thank you, Auntie. I was gifted the permission to um, care and protect this kid. And I was looking in all the wrong places to help him. I wanted to fix him, 
and he didn't need fixing, he just needed understanding. It has come through colonisation that we think that we have to fix each other. When there was once upon a time we accepted each other for who we were. It takes a village to raise a child, it's going to take a village to heal our children. Understanding, humility, aroha, forgiveness. been a cathartic experience taking this around. A good lesson and also how to really look after myself because I've hit the deck a few times mentally on this, on this journey. And I have to adjust and acknowledge all the time, every day, because when I meet people who are talking the talk and not walking it, I go, wow, why would I want to listen to you for? Thank you so much, like honestly. They needed to see that, they needed to feel it, they needed to hear it. Thanks for inviting me. It's for Bobby Charles as well. Yeah. I thought that was a version of me, you know. I've come back to try and help people like Bobby, mm. like me. He's a younger version of me. That's how I look at it. Yeah. Just humbled by people all the time. So humbled. I'll just go into whatever this is happens. Um, for the better, just want to help people. I don't care who you are, just want to help you. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand On Air.